the, the three uh, the three stooges of Finnish biohacking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Very we were. Happy we, to were have you. we were actually thinking coming, you know, naked on stage after that talk, and I feel <laughs> no <a> underwear. <laughs> I feel I feel a little bit shame because I have a compression shirt yeah. right now. But like I have I'm a reason for it. Yeah, But you're all trousers. wearing underwear. You have a compression shirt here. What? <laughs> here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. So uh, I think you're beautifully dressed in different colors. I'm sure they represent something very intelligent. <laughs> I'll let you do your show, guys. Yeah. You're in for a treat. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you. So today we're going to be biohacking physical exercise. Yes, we're going to be exorcists. <laughs> Exercising. <laughs> yeah, so we're the authors of the Biohacker's Handbook. How many of you have you know, heard about this book before? Nice. Great. Wow, we're doing some good, good, good marketing here in a way. Uh, so this, this book really dives deep into the different areas that you can practically biohack in your life today. Sleep, exercise, nutrition, mind and work. And we can probably agree that, you know, if you don't sleep enough, if you don't eat a proper diet, if you don't exercise, it's not going to show up as improvements in your cognitive function and eventually in the work that you do. So uh, today we're going to focus on one of the key building blocks, which is exercise. And uh, life is movement, right? Yeah. And the Plato already told uh, or find out that uh, movement is medicine. So l just like food is medicine, movement is also medicine. He found out also that movement, with, um, food without the movement, it's not as effective as mm. combined. So that's, that's why you have to exercise. That's, that's normal, normal to move. When you look at a child, my, my child, she moves all the time, even though when she's sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I remember like almost a decade ago, I was geeking out into the nutritional side of things, how you can affect your hormones and neurotransmitters and stuff like that. And then I read another book because I was really going deep with the nutritional side. And then just like, okay, crap, exercise, the effects for your hormonal system and all that, they're at the, another level. So it's always good to keep in mind that even though we like to go deep in certain aspects, just the whole picture. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's the whole picture of health, really. Um, exercise, fitness. And when, when you think of just like exercise itself, you're actually causing damage to a muscle. And then there's a recovery period. And that creates kind of a, it's kind of like a hormetic stressor that makes you more resilient, more capable of doing that kind of physical work in the, in the future. But it also trains your immune system and your cardiovascular system respiration, lymphatic all aspects, system, lymphatic, lymphatic system, system, the heart, the whole yeah. body, pretty much. And if you don't do it, if you don't exercise, if you don't produce the damage, that oxidative damage that exercise brings, um, you're not going to be as resilient. Yeah, I, I would consider, I, I wouldn't use the word exercise. That's, that has to like, okay, I have to perform at something. I would, I would call it like a movement or, or play, if you put it on the next slide. So uh, we, we need to play. More. We we need to just move mm. for the for the sake of moving because it's fun. I like to move here. If if I'm standing like 45 minutes uh, giving this lecture, I, I my brain wouldn't work that that well. I wouldn't have any fun. So mm. movement is life. So Italians are more intelligent. Yes, they are really <laughs> intelligent. I don't know yes. if there are any, any Italians <laughs> here, but. <laughs> and, I, and I think it's, it's good to understand that, of course, movement is language. It reflects what we carry with us. So, for example, I think Ido Portal is pretty famous right now, popularizing the idea of movement and freedom. So, if you're not comfortable with, for example, moving backwards, that's a dimension that you don't own. So your brain is not capable or, or the neuroplasticity <laughs> towards certain directions. You don't have that. So in a way, I think it's really important to start to think about movement more in a way that how we teach our brain more freedom, more possibilities. And of course, we see this in sciences with um, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, dancing, whatever, that we train our nervous system to just more complexity. Yeah, so if you think about it, you only move unilateral. So you only have like this this movement uh, direction or this. Nothing in this or not even speaking about like a 3D, 4D movement. That's how you uh, perceive the world. That's how you can develop your brain to be more 
more like um, living and, and uh, the co conceptual uh, uh, understanding mm. is be much better. More fluid. Yeah. Mm. This guy, Steven Jepson, he, he likes to play and there is cool videos on YouTube about how he does, you know, all kinds of acrobatic things on his backyard and he built himself all these kids' playgrounds, basically. It's an adult's playground. And he said that, you know, when you stop playing, that's when the cognitive decline starts. And it's important for all of us not to think of exercise as something that it means that you go to the gym, but it's something that you do all the time. So you should create maybe some kind of cues in your daily cycle where, you know, for example, every time you go for the toilet or every time you walk to the kitchen or you open, open the car door, whatever it is, all these cues, you attach some movement in it where you do a push-up or a pull-up or a squat. And one thing to start from is meetings. So when you have like, you know, all these office meetings, you can have more walking meetings. Every time you sp speak on the phone, you know, go around and walk around. I remember Vessi actually said that when he's speaking on the phone, he's doing kettlebell swings. <laughs> Same. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Um, so <clears throat> greasing the groove is, is kind of this idea of kind of working with it and uh, accumulating throughout the day a little bit of movement. And that's natural movement. I mean, we have kind of lost in city environments that we don't really play that much anymore. We don't kind of run up trees and we don't have to balance ourselves as easily. We have shoes invented that even make that a bit difficult also to yeah. kind of exercise certain parts of the uh, feet. There's actually a guy, a good, good friend of mine, also named Jaco, is uh, uh, introducing these natural movement camps. So it, it's, it's very, very fun to be a few days in the camp and just to climb and not, not maybe that extreme like in, in there which why, by the way, is Erwan Lacour, but uh, <laughs> there's something I do back at mm. home. So I, I chop wood, I lift heavy objects, and Jaco is, is uh, more, more in the What, is, what is Jaco, the story of the middle <laughs> picture? Yeah, I think what came to my mind is actually we've been in the Amazon for a few times, and uh, this trip, this expedition that we needed to move some trees from the river that w we were going to the places that literally no white person have ever been. So we were really far out at the Las Piedras River. But the point being the indigenous people that we met, one of the first things they looked is how big is your feet, like how wide they are. And what we do with shoes, similar things that Vesi was describing, we just constrict it. And it was interesting to kind of see that that's the marker of manhood, like how wide your mm. feet yeah. are, how much movement you've been doing with your body. So uh, yeah. Let me share another sort of Amazonian experience I had when I went there and met some of the tribes, was that I was following an old lady, like probably in her 80s or something, and very small, and she was like almost like flying through the uh, uneven terrain and all the roots and everything that's going on and the rocks and it's quite wet in the rainforest. And, and she did it so effortlessly and I was coming behind her like, <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, like, you know, having difficulty with that activity. And that's when I realized kind of like how you become also more energy efficient in movement yes. once you practice it every yeah. day. And you practice your proprioception. Uh, there's a, there are a lot of like um, nerves uh, on, on underneath the feet, so you can actually train them. It's it's good for your balance. So go barefoot every time you can. Uh, I, I even do it in the winter time, but uh, especially in the summer, summer spring time. Uh, my experience was when I uh, gave up of these normal normal shoes, my um, leg widened m maybe uh, one centimeter. So that's, that's an experience when you, especially if you have a very tight shoes. Mm. So what is the story, by the way, behind just this Just one point picture. for that. Next time yeah. you're walking on a rocky um, surface or so, try to not constrict your feet, because that hurts more. Try to relax your feet. It's much easier. That's, again, the eff effectiveness of how do you use your body. But relax. It's easier. Relax. By the way, the same applies for cold uh, exposure. So when it gets cold, people kind of tense up, but it's actually much easier if you just loosen up. Try to, you know, strength, uh, you know, put a fist and put that into cold water and then just like relax it and try it again. It's a totally different experience. Yeah. So you have a child here, right? Yeah, there's my child. She can actually jump on the, on the rebounder. She's uh, 
little over one years old. Is it so isn't that the risk for you know biggest risk for uh, school fracture? Yeah, yeah, with the bigger bigger rebounders. But that that small small rebounding device is actually very good. For example, in the morning when you wake up, you know, you can uh, wake up your lymphatic system. So I usually go and jump like 100 jumps there and get some fresh air. So that's that's a good start for the day. But also you can do uh, like serious exercise with that. But it's it's mm. basically it's fun. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. doubles up the oxygen intake compared to running yeah. mm. on its own. So, well, anyway, if we put all these kind of studies and all the stuff um, behind exercise into one chart, we see its immune system function and benefits definitely for cognitive function for neuro, uh, neurogenesis. So you get uh, the increase of brain-derived neurotrophic factors and all of those are kind of another good reason to keep on moving and when it comes to elderly this is super important the moment when they stop moving and they kind of stay at home or they get bed sick that could be the end of them you know it's it's really important to get them moving to keep their minds also moving yeah so with that <coughs> um our, our our book actually dives into exercise as not something that you know let's build large muscles or, you know, do crazy feats. But it's really about the health aspect of it. And uh, we want to go to a few methods and few kind of... Uh, okay. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> uh, yeah. Anatomy and physiology. So yeah. Heart. So basically, uh, every chapter of our book is um, there is having a section of anatomy and physiology because it, when you know the basics, it's easier to do to do something to improve it. For example, heart function. So here you can see how how the blood pressure uh, fluctuates when the heart pumps when it relaxes, and so you can see like like the blood pressure. So like normal, very good blood pressure would be like 110 slash 60. So that's like the um, blood pressure of an Aboriginal. But you can measure measure these things by different devices. If you put the next slide, uh, there are good blood pressure devices, pulse oxidative ma meters, heart rate and heart rate variability devices. So th those are available for for everybody at the moment. Yeah, and if you do exercise, then you can use heart rate zones and you know yeah. practicing in Arabic on, uh, or on Arabic zones and so on. So heart heart is in the middle of the body, and it's it's I I would say it's the center. It's not the brain. It's the heart, in in every way, in physical way, in emotional way. But what what you can do about it is uh, how how you get most effective way of pumping blood into your system. So here are a few few examples: uh, the nervous system, the condition of nervous system, hormones, your fitness level affect the heart rate but then there are things that you're gonna affect with your pumping uh, efficiency it's the heart size you can exercise that and also how reflective your heart is so that way you get this cardiac output mm. that's very simple <laughs> simplified of this uh, matter yeah. yeah yeah so so here we go into a little bit more detail in terms of uh, what kind of activities increase heart rate and, and, and cardiac contractibility and, and which ones are kind of decreasing it. But it's kind of important to understand that the heart is doing mechanical work in addition to doing electrical work. And the mechanical work actually is in the root of our lifespans. So why do we live like, even if we do everything correct in biohacking terms, 120 years old is basically, you know, for most of us the limit. And the limit comes, for example, from the, uh, the aorta. It actually kind of, well, um, it, it lengthens just like a rubber band as you age and it stiffens. And from that, what happens, you lose pressure in microveins. And the first organs to get a hit from that are the kidneys and the brain. So that's why neurogenetic diseases, kidney failure, etc. And you can see in older, elderly people, you, know, can, you can see in their hands, you know, just like... Um, you know, problems with veins and so on. So this yeah. pressure problem is in the root of, you know, and w when they try to, you know, put a machine in to replace the heart, uh, you can't do a surgical procedure that would still kind of maintain the even surface there, at least with current technology. And because you have the scar tissue, when you have this waveform that basically the heart sends through the uh, arteries, uh, and it hits uh, any kind of like scar tissue, 
you lose some of it, see? So that's why people who get a heart replacement, there's a pump that's kind of machine. They live only six years because they lose pressure throughout the body. Mm. So it's important to exercise and um, train all these aspects, obviously, but the heart, you know, drinking a lot of coffee, exercising a lot, etc., is also one of the kind of systems that you could say it has an expiration date the more you use it. So it's important to also focus on recovery. And as much as you can pump up the heart rate, you also find the ways to recover. And that's what the you know, Zen monks and you know, uh, long-term martial artists and meditators have you know, discovered. Through exercise, you can train the body, but you also have to train relaxation. OK. so. Um we have uh, systemic circulation. Let's go pretty fast through this. As you can see, there are pretty large and wide uh, arteries and veins in the genital area, which was the <laughs> previous talk. So that's, that's like the main, main point. It goes into your um, lower extremes. So if it's, if it's compressed, it's not that effective. Also, same thing with the lymphatic system. So um, what the scientists recently found out that there's actually a lymphatic system in the brain which they, they haven't found out yet. So, so it's, it's uh, considering the whole body. But you need to also move your lymphatic system. So what would it be the best movement for lymphatic system, Jakob? Yeah, I think the um, rebounder for micro breaks during the day is a very good idea because lymphatic system doesn't have a pump in the same way as circulation has. So I just think that uh, vibration plate or rebounding during those micro breaks Breaks is an excellent idea. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and when we look at the, I, I, I talked a little bit about the pressure, so the microcirculation is really kind of one of the, one of the elements that keeps that pressure even uh, throughout the body. And that's where the exchange of nutrients happen in tissues. All right, let's go into breathing. So everybody needs to breathe. So the slower we breathe, the longer we live. That might be the case. For example, in the case of big uh, animals like whales, they breed only like three to five times yeah. per minute and they live a very long time. For example, in the other side, there are mouses who breed like very fast and they live only like, I don't know, how many years, a few years. Yeah. The, the so, way to yeah. take control of your heart rate also and heart rate variability is through breathing. So that's the kind of only part of the autonomous nervous system that you have control over. So through breathing, you can influence these kind of uh, almost subconscious uh, yeah. uh, let's things. Let's do an exercise. So um, we, we do the box breathing. Is any, anybody aware of the box breathing? So we breathe in four seconds, hold four seconds, breathe four seconds out, and then hold for another four seconds. Let's do one cycle. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, you can continue as you put the next slide. We can How do see you feel, by the way? Who feels slightly better? Even yeah. with one breath. <laughs> yeah, that's, one breath. That's amazing. By the way, at yeah. Google, they practice one breath before meetings and so on. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's part of corporate life. Here. So you can train. If you can, you can continue with the box breathing, you can train actually your respiratory capacity with this. So with inhalation, there's a, you can actually train that capacity to get more air into your lungs and then hold it there and then exhale and pu push it like <laughs> like really empty so you can that way um, train your expiratory reserve volume and when you train these both aspects you can train your total lung volume and, and the functional capacity. A lot of people, they don't breathe fully, you know, and even just like emptying their lungs completely doesn't happen. So there's a lot of stale air there. And when you bring those all back to physical function and physical movement, it's super important for, you know, just like effective use of your muscles. And I think well. the classical metaphor as mind being the kite and our breathing being the threat that controls the mind or the kite is pretty profound. Because whenever too cold or whatever, you, we, we come more into our bodies, into breathing. We get more resolution to what's happening in our mind. Yeah. And that's 
profound. Think, think about if how, how many do you cold showers, morning, evening? Well, that's a lot. So the first time you tried it, you were probably like, <laughs> <laughs> like this, but can you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> like, like monkey. Well, <laughs> but you get uh, accustomed to that. So the next time you're okay, okay, it's a little bit cold, and the next time you're like. Okay, this is now in, in better control. And you can actually uh, practice your breathing and presence in the cold shower. That's for sure. Right. So um, let's hack some muscles. So um, muscle fibers, cells, there are basically like two basic types, slow uh, switch muscle fibers, which are good for endurance. And then there are like fast switch for strength and explosiveness. Fast switches are like a 2A, 2X, and then some other subtypes. But basically, um, that's genetically um, manipulated, not, not manipulated, but uh, like uh, um, inherited. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the word. Genetically inherited from your parents. So you might have like a certain amount of uh, uh, slow muscle cells and the other person might have more of like fast muscle cells. And you have this uh, genetic mutation of the ACTN3 gene. I don't know if anybody has measured that. Mm. Ah, a few geeks here. Mm. So uh, w what are your results on that? Any mutation? Huh? Sprinting. Sprinting. Sprinting, yeah, you look yeah. like that too. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, it's compliment, yes, you totally. Can, yeah. Yeah. So you can train these, you know, different muscle fibers by different types of exercise. And uh, also, actually, even though you're genetically programmed for something to have a, have a benefit from, uh, this can be also changed through stem cell th therapies and all these kind of um, yeah. uh, emerging things. But you can definitely see by looking at people like also like what they do and what they've developed in. So probably um, a gym rat like you is not going to run very fast, I guess. I, I run pretty fast, but not very long. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm not the yeah. endurance type. So let's talk about energy systems yeah. a little bit. So <laughs> your, what's, your, what's going on with your mitochondria? Yeah, so this is, this is like, uh, if you need one picture to understand your energy system in the cell, this would be it. So I don't know if lots it's... Lots of lines. Yeah, lots of yeah. lines. But this is basically cellular respiration in mitochondria. Uh, where you get uh, energy from food and how you process into electrons and, and basically movement. We go pretty um, deep into this subject yeah, in, in the book. Know, but and also how to hack with nutrition. Yeah. All these, all these cycles that but are going on there. Basically, the mitochondria is the energy system. It, it's, it's like the basic uh, energy pump in, in the, uh, every cell. So you need, need to take care of your yeah. mitochondria. Pump some ATP and that's kind of key. <laughs> yeah. So what about Jaco? You have been like uh, quite a pro sports, like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, won many uh, Finnish championships, and uh, you have a pretty uh, fast muscle uh, fibers. And what kind of type, if, if you think about the energy systems, it's aerobic, anaerobic one, and mm -hmm. anaerobic two, for example, in your uh, sport? Yeah, I think the, the point is that people need to understand that, for example, for aerobic. Um, systems to actually start giving a good base, you need to do a lot of it. Yes. And this is one of those things that, well, both of my parents are PEs and I've been doing that for most of my life. And then you can build much better foundation for most of these. So I think that in this phase, we kind of overlook the aerobic exercises and just want to go, because of course it's very important increasingly, especially for older people to do weightlifting and all that. But to actually have a good foundation, I think we kind of overlook just running and skiing yeah. and stuff like that. But uh, that being said, I think, um, yeah, after that, you can make these um, these uh, limits much more wide. So I think my experience being that uh, now, after a, a years of, of training much less, I, I can feel pretty much immediately how much um, more, um, you know, what's the word? Um, Reserve? It's, yeah, it's not as wide those ranges yeah. of, of yeah. just performing because the anaerobic um, phase kicks in pretty, pretty yeah. rapidly. Well, the so key, key point of the slide was that you can train your different 
energy systems. Yes. You can train how you produce power with ATP and creatine phosphate. You can train your lactic acid tolerance. You can train your aerobic uh, system. So the aerobic system, like the low level activity, that's the basis of all movement. So you have to train that. Yeah, and some people they get a bit biased about you know what they do. It, either it's you know uh, yoga or it's heavy lifting and so on. But it's actually just from you know looking at what we are, what we are made out of. It's it's good to you know develop all different areas, also flexibility and and uh, uh, movement in general, agility, coordination, uh, and uh, you can do all of that stuff you know in a biohacker gym, for example obviously, and you have some cool tools there uh, that you can deal with. But it's not a tool sport. Uh, you know, what did we have before gyms? <laughs> you know, we, we had nature and that's, was the, that's the natural movement. Often people think that I have to go to the gym to do a lot of uh, heavy body work, body work, but actually just looking at body weight exercises and the benefits that you can get from things like seven minute workout for this, uh, building this aerobic capacity is, is pretty profound. Yeah, and uh, you can combine like um, some muscle training with uh, elevating your heart rate. This uh, 11 movements, uh, the so-called seven-minute workout, it's actually pretty effective. And it's also training for, for different kinds of movement. And there's a bunch yeah. of apps for it. And uh, I don't know if we brought any kettlebells No, here. we forgot that. <laughs> we were supposed to get one kettlebell here and do 20 things, swings here. But um, mm. how many does like kettlebell swings every now and then? And oh, you, cool. how, how many of you have yeah. it in the office? A few? That's great because yeah. that's a that's a perfect movement to do some like basic swings, the whole yeah. body movement, and it gets your brain again back on track. So yeah. just imagine Bessi on his chair, you know, kettlebell <laughs> swings with a phone. Swing in his with hand. the you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> that would be probably the kind of one thing to go if you want to kind of hack what's the silver bullet. Just get that kettlebell and get your body going because it activates the whole body so nicely. Yeah. So also snatch, you. kettlebell snatch. Is a, this is a, their so-called secret service snatch test. Anybody have heard of that? Uh, well, it's, it's a <laughs> uh, 10 minute AMRAP of uh, 24 or 12 kilo kettlebells, 24 for men and 12 for women. And if you go over 200 rep repetitions, you get into the secret service. I tried that as <laughs> a few times. I read my hand, but I, I got into 184, I yeah. think, so I wouldn't be an agent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like to do a lot of isometric training, and that's what I so, sort of just combine into my daily routine of working at the office long hours and doing all that work. So, you know, just like doing some planks or, or just like isometric uh, holds in different ways is, is super effective. And you can actually uh, boost them up a little bit by adding a little bit of vibration uh, into it. So just like try to do uh, a plank on a vibration plate, it's almost like doing 100 push-ups uh, in, a, in a minute. Yeah, you can actually do like this quasi-isometric push up with the handles on a vibration plate. So it basically means that you do a one minute push up and it's like vibrating like crazy and you lower it very, very slowly. And when you reach this position then hold it as long as you can. After this one movement, you're like, Yeah, it's only that. one, one movement. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. If, if you do it like a few times, you, the metabolic effect is it's amazing. Yeah. If, you, if yeah. you have any kind of like physical ailments or problems with joints and so on, uh, that's where you might want to consider also uh, electrical muscle stimulation. It's also very good for recovery if you want to you know, work on a computer and still do the kind of uh, uh, activation that would help uh, to pump out the lactic acid. Um, but Demo is often in, in the office. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like that on the phone also. Uh, so looking at the studies, that's not necessarily the, you know, I don't know if you have like TV shop and you know, this you know, get apps, Atronics. Six but pack in six minutes. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's not really that good for it, but it's good for keeping up with muscle um, uh, mass. So you don't get any loss if you get injured or so whatever, you know, just using this might help to keep yeah. up with that, you know, or muscle that imbalances. 
Yeah. No. I, I've corrected some muscle imbalances with um, electrostimulation. Uh, and actually combining that with uh, dynamic movements, physical movements like, you know, a squat <laughs> is extremely effective. That's, that's, that's really cool. Uh, so looking at the measuring thing, what would be only the one thing that you would measure? Well, you revealed it already, but it would be in strength-wise and uh, longevity-wise would be your grip strength. How many have you uh, tried your... What's your max, max grips? And, uh, uh, any results? If you want to say 55. 55, okay. Any more? <laughs> That's pretty good. 78. Whoa. Kilos, really? Yeah. Shit, okay. <laughs> uh, here in Stock Stockholm is uh, Tekniska Museet, and there is children area where is that uh, compression test yeah. possibility for both yeah. hands together. And there is about 82. That kind of yeah, something great. for adults also. Mm. Yes. So, yeah. Okay, but it's a different metrics, but that doesn't yeah uh, necessarily um, it's, it's mm. very good uh, result. Yeah. yeah. But when it comes to you can think of it almost like when you are sending a signal from the brain, it's almost like a speaker when you have an audio signal going into it. So when you when you tr you can try it's just like. Make a fist. Don't don't squeeze a lot yet, but start squeezing a little bit. Can you feel how your muscles are activating throughout the hole? Yeah. And the when more you, you squeeze, it, the, the you lower the the pressure. Actually, a whole whole body. So that's exercise. that's why it's super effective for the whole body, and that's yeah. why also like squats are extremely effective for the whole body. There are like captains of crush. Yeah. You can <laughs> practice those. And Same I time. used to do this, do this uh, like uh, two months every day when I went to the sauna. So I did like this, and my grip strength Im improved a lot. So it was easier to do pull-ups and deadlifts and stuff like that, and carry like uh, <laughs> groceries and. So it's a it's a wood. good brand that if you want to kind of measure your progression, climbers and people like that yeah. use those a lot. And just a little hack if you're doing pull-ups or whatever, just see the effect if you grip harder, how much more you can do because it activates the nervous system and all that. Yeah. Now looking at like individual differences, you can look at your genes. Here's some results from taking my 23andMe data, uploading it to a UK-based company, DNA Fit, and this is what it produces. Um, it's kind of like gives you some idea of injury risk and recovery uh, profile, and I'm more likely to be Usain Bolt than uh, you know <laughs> um, marathoner. So, so that's kind of what I'm working with. So I have very high injury risk, but I probably recover very fast. I'm I'm, I'm good at that. Um, so you may, might wa might want to take these things into account also when it comes to kind of choosing what's your favorite sport. Um, looking at the sensors, different sensors that you can, you know, track. A lot of them are related to health, uh, fitness, basically. You have movement trackers, you have heart rate monitors, and sleep trackers are pretty much like using those sensitive sensors for um, recognizing small micro-movements during, during nighttime, like breathing and respiration and movement. And um, these things are getting in surprisingly small... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> surprisingly small. So this aura ring uh, is, is pretty incredible in terms that it can measure body temperature fluctuation. It can also uh, look at nervous system, the heart rate variability uh, through sleep. Yeah, and respiration. Uh, what I also like, it's also measuring not steps only, but sitting, how much I sit, which is more important. Yeah, kind and of overall factor. movement, like if you move per every hour. hour. So yeah. it's a, like uh, the metrics is uh, amazing and you can just it, it, this is a lot more accurate than uh, any wristband, mm -hmm. and also the sleep uh, yeah. paragraphs and measurements. It's it's uh, compared they, to like sleep polygraphs, it's ninety percent accuracy. Yeah, it has been independently uh, analyzed by um, um, a research group how it's possible to use you know something like this compared to a um, heart rate monitor. But what is kind of key here is also what kind of coaching it can do. So the coaching aspect is interesting. Uh, on Monday. <laughs> I was flying from Frankfurt to Orlando, and I was giving the world's first keynote on an airplane. Uh, and it was about travel biohacks uh, to a group of people who were flying to a conference uh, uh, called Sapphire Now, SAP's, uh, SAP's largest conference in Orlando. And I spoke about these things, and um, I slept there one night, and I flew directly here to do this conference. 
And um, Aura has been with me all the time telling me about my readiness. And I've definitely seen like how air travel affects resting heart rate and uh, you know the stress of you know going through so many time spans. And um, so one maybe with the next slide I want to just show uh, and the next one. This one. Yeah. So uh, that one. So I'm actually measuring my uh, three day constant recovery and, and heart rate variability. That's the first bit. It's also upstairs. This is like my go-to with my patients. Um, if I want to see how stressed they are, I would say that they need to do the first beat analysis. Yeah, we had some, you know, Hannes Schoblad examples in the morning, but those who were not there, here are some of my own data. So, you know, just like a typical work week, um, you don't get a lot of recovery even throughout the night if you're just like spending a lot of time in sympathetic nervous system overactivated state. This is one week where I was doing a conference and you can see the reserves, body resource is really declining. Uh, this is how it should look like, so you get recovery throughout the day. And all those green uh, parts are where I did deep breathing exercises that we did in the beginning of the talk. Those are super important tools to use in um, combination with you know the work that you do that activates sympathetic nervous system, but also physical exercise. So learning to use your breathing to bring up that parasympathetic nervous system activation and get yourself to rest is, is super crucial. And when you do that throughout the day, uh, you fall asleep much faster. Uh, it's, it's less breaks you get throughout the night and restless movement. And that's, that's really important. Yeah, let's go to the next slide because uh, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. need to probably go. So my, my go-to hacks for um, recovery are sauna or infrared sauna and cold plunges or cold, cold showers. Yeah. The two most important things. Absolutely. And then for, for the activation the of the parasympathetic nervous system. If we, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, I think one of the things uh, when it comes to recovery, nervous system recovery, I've been tracking this for uh, several years now and I swimming is one of the most um, clear things that I can see in the data that affects that and that's pretty much the way it goes. I think for a past few years I've been pretty much swimming every day in a w natural waters yeah. whether it was summer or winter but that's been a huge huge thing yeah yeah and when you look at the brain we start from the brain and brain health different forms of physical exercise develop different parts of the brain and that's kind of significant and interesting and it's important to practice also like balance and movement and all those things and it turns out that the world's most intelligent people, uh, like Einstein's bra brains, they've studied those, and what they realized is that you know the violin play or the dance that they practice from a young age, all of those actually, you know, factor in into their intelligence, their capability of using their brains fully. Yeah. So, so, and uh, just to conclude, we start from exercise. We talk about fitness, but in the end, to do that properly you have to also do recovery properly and you have to do it in a kind of uh, thorough way and not just, you know, focus on one aspect of fitness, but kind of get the whole picture together. Yes. That's and it's right. a wrap. That's a wrap. Go upgrade yourself. Thanks.